Hi, my name is Brian, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about how to trim spray foam. So, um, if you've watched my other videos, you know I am installing spray foam insulation in my house. Um, I'm shooting these videos because there's just not a lot of information that I could find when I was trying to figure out if I wanted to do this. Um, so, first things first, trimming spray foam generates lots and lots of dust, and, and so it's little teeny tiny particles of it, bigger pieces of it. So you need to wear the proper personal protective equipment. And I'm using a 3M 6800 series uh, full face mask and respirator with um, you know appropriate uh, filter cartridges. If you're not sure what filter cartridges to use, you can contact 3M or you can look at their literature for guidance. And so what I want to do today is I'm going to clean up the surfaces of these studs and then I'm going to run a planer down the wall to um, smooth it out. It's a really labor intensive process which explains why a lot of companies that do spray foam don't want to do full cavity fills because to do a full cavity fill you have to overfill the, the cavity and then you have to go back and touch up if you've, if you've not put enough depth in one spot. So let's talk about the tools. You know, I, I studied all sorts of stuff. In fact, let me go get the other two tools that I don't use and I'll explain why they don't work. Okay, so I searched high and low for the tools to clean off uh, spray foam on a wall. And the first tool I purchased was this uh, modified air sander. So um, this is really just a closed or an open cell blade with a couple holes drilled in it mounted to an air sander. Harbor Freight makes an air sander that is probably just as reliable as this Ingersoll Rand and um, doesn't cost nearly as much. So the Harbor Freight sander is probably 20 bucks. Um, it's an inline sander. The biggest problem is it's really hard to control this and it's really unwieldy and so I just found it awkward to use. You know, if it works for you, great. Didn't work for me. Don't recommend it. So the second thing that caught my attention was there's some folks out there selling modified Sawzalls and I found a company called SBF Depot. That's Spray Polyurethane Foam Depot or SPF Depot. They sell this little gold coupler. And um, I shot a video, and I apologize, the video is not in the best focus, but it showed how to convert a $20 Harbor Freight Sawzall to, or reciprocating saws, they call it, to handle spray foam. This works okay. Um, it's just not terribly efficient. Um, maybe if it was a faster Sawzall, that would help. I don't know. I, don't, I just don't think this works that well. Um, but here is the hundred dollar solution and by the way these air tools require a significant amount of air in order to run i have a five horsepower uh, air compressor that puts out 15.8 cfm at 90 psi uh, that's a decent air compressor it still barely runs these tools so through a lot of trial and error my friend that's helping me who didn't want to be in my video um, he's actually doing the bulk of this, um, but he and I played with a bunch of different things and finally figured out something that works. So the first thing we use is a grinder, just any old angle grinder. And in this particular case, this is a $9.99 Harbor Freight angle grinder. They put them on sale a few times a year. I own a bunch of them because I like to do welding. And I'm using a knotted wire brush. So let me bring this close to the camera so you can see what, an, what, an, what it is. So you can see there's, there's little knots here. And um, a regular wire cut brush works just fine. You know, if you didn't have a lot of foam, you could actually use this to trim all your foam. This will work on canned foam, it works on closed cell foam, it'll work on open cell foam, and it just tears up the foam. So as you go along here, it tears all the foam off the wood, and if you've got foam sticking out, you can actually use it to trim some of the foam, but there's a more efficient way to trim the whole wall. So um, I expect that at some point this thing is going to inhale enough uh, foam dust that it's going to kill it. It's a $10 grinder, who cares? So the other tool that does work 
is this. Now, you know, I don't really know what company makes this because there's a bunch of people selling them online. They did, they're about $1,200, $1,300 online. I found one on eBay that had been lightly used that was um, about half that price, and so I bought it. And uh, let me take the mystery out of this thing. So this is a custom aluminum handle with a jet 7-inch air sander mounted to one side of it, and then there are a whole bunch of wire brush wheels mounted to some kind of custom arbor, and um, that's it. You know, now the replacement wire brush assembly is like $600. Hello, highway robbery. Um, you know, let's just say there's 20 of these things and they're four bucks a piece. It's 80 bucks. Stick of aluminum in the middle can't be that valuable. So, you know, the company that makes this is charging an arm and a leg and your firstborn because they can. Um, so, first things first, you need to put oil in it because, like all um, tools, it, if it doesn't get oiled, it's not going to run for long. Now, they, um, it's kind of funny, they published some BS about it requiring 20 CFMs of air and needing a three quarter inch hose and yada, yada, yada. And, um, you know, maybe that makes the performance a little bit better but the tool's rated for 13 CFM. I don't know. Maybe you want to double the, the air you supply to your tool or not. I think that just requires you to have a big air compressor. And so I, I do have a solution. It, this thing will drain down the, uh, the air compressor, so I, did, I do have a solution to that. I'll shoot a separate video on how to gang uh, compressors. Um, and so essentially, once the studs are cleaned off, you take this and you run down the stud cavity. And that cleans the spray foam off. And then you have mounds and mounds and mounds of little tiny pieces of foam. So there's another tool. Um, I think it's a CI tool. I, you know, none of these guys really understand branding. So there's another tool that's based on a Makita chainsaw and it has a, has a custom machine cutter head. Um, it's made by, uh, I think, Schmidt and Sons or something, but that honestly looked like the best tool. Um, unfortunately, it's $2,100. So if I was paying full price, I would have bought it. But because I was able to find the bargain, um, I bought the bargain instead. And the bargain works. I'm only doing my house, so I don't have to have the Ferrari of foam removal tools. Um, but again, I wanted to shoot this video because there's not a lot of information that I could find on how to clean up foam. And this is big pain in the ass part of the project. So um, this is closed cell foam. Um, the structure that it's applied to is two by four framing with exterior gypsum. So that's sheetrock on the outside. It's, it's ex outside sheetrock. And then there's uh, airspace and there's some brick. and. Um, you know, it's not a bad assembly. Um, in 1965, this was state of the art. The problem is that there's a crack here, crack here, crack here. There's, there's just horizontal cracks between the pieces of sheetrock, and you can't get a moisture barrier in between the brick and the house. So the next best solution is to come back with closed cell spray foam, and that gives you a moisture barrier. Any place where the sheetrock has incidental damage, it, it seals it. And um, so I get a vapor barrier, I get a, a uh, air barrier, and of course, my favorite part, insects do not crawl in foam and rodents don't nest in it. Um, so it's, it, it will make a, a really good wall assembly when all is said and done. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna suit up and I'm gonna do a little bit of the wall so you can see how this works. Um, Oh, before I forget, the other piece of the puzzle that I added was a Harbor Freight dust collector. You know, I'm not, I'm not addicted to Harbor Freight. I just don't believe in, in there's certain kinds of tools that you're only going to use a few times and they'll be just fine, and Harbor Freight's great for that. Hammer's a perfect example. Um, so I... Uh, I I shot another video on how to make a dust collector and I salvaged the barrel out of that when I moved out of that property. So I have a barrel separator and I'll, I'll 
show you that here in just a just a moment. And the barrel separator collects probably three quarters of the dust and the and the dirt. It's it's really quite amazing. And um, a little bit of it still gets through to the primary dust collector, and basically I bag it and throw it away. Um, my uh, waste factor is somewhere in the neighborhood of 10, 10 to 20 percent on this job. Um, I understand from my research that that's a fairly normal um, uh, waste ratio on uh, a full cavity fill. So I'm going to go ahead and suit up or gear up and then I'm going to go ahead and, and do one section of the wall so you can see what it looks like. Um, and I will show you what the dust collector looks like as well. The Harbor Freight two horsepower dust collector, I think I got it for about $165 with a 20% off coupon. And it's acting as a um, particle separator at this point and it is catching the vast majority of the junk that gets sucked up and it just helps reduce the load on the dust collector. Um, so it's just, you know, this is the inlet. It, there's a 90 here and a 90 there. It circulates the air and causes it, causes the particles to drop out. And then whatever's left goes into the regular dust collector, goes through another cyclone. I, okay, so here's the business end of the dust collector. And I've got a floor sweep attachment uh, from Peachtree Woodworking that I use to vacuum the dust off the floor. It makes life a little bit easier. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put my mask on and I will show you how this works. So as you can see, there's a ton of dust that this creates. Okay, so as you can see, that tool smooths this off very nicely. Um, it's a fair amount of work to do this to the whole wall. Fortunately, I have a helper who'll do most of the rest of the wall for me. Um, I want to show you the dust collector part of this. So you can see the amount of dust that's been produced by just that little bit. And so, uh, this just comes along and sucks all of it up. It's like a giant shop vac. And that's all there is to it.